How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. Lovely indeed is the place where God dwells. We gather today to celebrate God's presence in this new church building. And certainly among you and for the entire church, there is cause for great rejoicing because of what we have been able to accomplish. But most importantly, here we acknowledge God's presence among us. I am delighted to be with you on this joyous occasion. The beautiful cathedrals of Europe were built by faithful people. They used their skills, donated their time, and shared their gifts in order to erect magnificent cathedrals where God could encounter his people. And I know you have done the same. In addition to your generous monetary gifts, your labors and your prayers have provided support for this undertaking. I am particularly appreciative of your good pastor, Father Celentano, who has been actively involved in the planning and construction of this new church, and who brought various parish communities together in order to make this happen. His has been a work of love and a work of art, and we thank him for all that he has done to bring this day about. What does the dedication of a church mean? The answer is found in the liturgy for this occasion. The liturgy of the church is always our first and best teacher. I invite you and encourage you to listen attentively to the prayers and to immerse yourself in the action that the church prescribes for the dedication of a church. You and I form the living stones of the church, and each action has meaning for us. We have been reminded of our baptism through the sprinkling of the walls in ourselves, encouraged to listen to the word of God, which unfolds the mystery of Christ for us, and helps us to achieve our salvation. Later we will consecrate the altar with chrism, which I consecrated during Holy Week. And after we will be strengthened by the Lord's body and blood in Holy Communion. We will lovingly place the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle, where we trust the Lord will be always praised, adored, loved, and glorified at all times. In the second reading, St. Peter told us that Jesus is the living stone, the foundation of the church. We were invited to come to this living stone and place our trust and faith in him. United to Christ in baptism, we also are living stones, formed by the firm foundation of our faith. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people he claims as his own. God has brought us together as one people, a people which acknowledges him in truth and serves him in holiness. This building is always incomplete and feels empty without the worshiping community present, without the people who are its living stones. We bring to this church and this place people of all ages who wish to receive the new life of baptism and the strength of the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confirmation, couples who wish to commit themselves to each other through the sacrament of matrimony, ourselves when we seek nourishment from the Eucharist, are in need of pardon and peace through the sacrament of reconciliation. 
our loved ones, when we commit them to the merciful embrace of God in the funeral liturgy. This sacred place is not a hiding place from our concerns and the world around us. We come here with all of our thoughts, all of our distractions, all who have asked for our prayers, and all for whom we promise to pray. We ask the Lord to care for them, and to guide them, and to guide us on our pilgrimage of faith. During this year of mercy, Pope Francis has urged us to fix our gaze on Jesus and learn from him. Jesus' words and deeds lift the veil on the mystery of God. They reveal a God who is patient and merciful and whose mercy endures forever. How fitting we draw near as we draw near to the conclusion of this special jubilee year that we dedicate a church in our diocese to God's divine mercy. The name of a church gives the church a special character. The name of this church reminds us that divine mercy is not just the topic for this year's reflection. As the most stupendous attribute, mercy best describes who God is for us and in turn who he calls us to be for others. Once you were his people, once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once there was no mercy for you, but now you have found mercy. These were the closing words of our second reading. Here at Divine Mercy Church, you will find mercy because you encounter the living God made known in Jesus. Mercy is not an abstraction. It's God's loving concern for each of us made visible and tangible in Jesus, the face of the Father's mercy. Having encountered Christ in word and sacrament, you then go forward to extend mercy to others. With the psalmist we pray, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord! How happy they who dwell in your house! <laughs>